everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. <laughs> Norman found a comic. And a dual disc system as well. <laughs> <laughs> and an awesome brony reviewer Silver Quill. Hey, listen! Hey, hey, listen! Hey, listen! Oh, no, listen! He's turning hey, into hey, an hey, annoying brony yeah. Navi Silver Quill. Uh, Navi. Oh, ah, I'm gonna kill you. Come here. I'm gonna pull out your wings hey. and fry you. Now come Look here. <laughs> ah, where's, where's my fly swatter? Wow. <gasps> and today we are reviewing the Friends Forever issue number 17. Starring Twilight Sparkle and Big Macintosh. Written by Ted Anderson. With art by Brenda Hickey and colors by Heather Breckel. So in this comic, Twilight Sparkle is overstressed with an amazing amount of friendship work that she has to go through. And in trying to figure out a way to tackle all of that, she decides to get the teachings from Big Macintosh, who also tackles into a, not a lot of work, doesn't stop doing stuff at the farm, but has a more laid-back lifestyle. Uh, will Twilight be able to learn something from a, an, uh, an unlikely uh, source of knowledge and wisdom? Let's find out. So, what did you guys think of this uh, of this uh, comic? Like uh, silver, always uh, with inverted alphabetical order. You go first. What, what did you think of this one? I really enjoyed this one. It is an unlikely pairing, as uh, Twilight and Big Mac have not shared a lot of uh, on-screen dynamic outside of uh, Lesson Zero. But I've noticed a trend amongst the Friends Forever comics. The ones that don't fly so well are the ones that forget the central pairing. I make it sound like a romance. But, you know, the team, the duo. Pinky and Applejack were supposed to be the one, but then they, they brought in this truffle uh, pony, and she kind of she kind of broke up that, dy- that dynamic. Zakura and Fluttershy were supposed to work on a problem, but it, Discord stole the show. Mina arguably undermined Spike and Luna's uh, dynamic. So those are the comics that don't work. The ones that do pretty well, that maybe you focus on one character and the other gets to show their strength at the end. Mm-hmm. Applejack and the Mayor, or uh, Rarity, as we'll talk about later, Rarity and the Cakes. Mm-hmm. Twilight and Big Macintosh is in the tier that gets it done, does it really well. The two characters work together from the get-go and move forward on the story together, mm-hmm. much the same way as uh, Rarity and Applejack, or Rarity and Babs. Or rarity in anyone, except the cakes. <laughs> Silver, what mm-hmm. about the previous issue, uh, Diamond Tiara Silver Spoon? Oh, that one, you know, that one is actually a good read in, in showing the horribleness of Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. <laughs> with, with the support of all the other characters. Now, that might be what undermines it. You have to bring in so many other characters just to make it, you know, enjoyable and not teeth gritting. Oh, I hate these two. But they did what they were supposed to do. Be awful. Mm. But in a way, I can't say it's a bad comic. It's just that I'm not invested in those particular characters. Mm. All right, that's a the difference there. All right. So this one I thoroughly enjoyed. Not only seeing Twilight deal with her own frustrations, but also getting into Big Mac, Big Macintosh's head. Literally, literally. <laughs> now I will, I will say there's a certain personality aspect to Big Macintosh that we uh, will probably want to talk about. As we get into this, but mm-hmm. that's for the more in-depth discussion. Yeah, that's when we go uh, hip deep into spoilers. We're mm-hmm. not, we're not there yet, but we will. We we definitely will. But so, what about you, Norman? What did you what did you make out of this uh, comic? Uh, okay, I need to start from the very beginning before opening the page, before opening the app. Um, I am getting all my comics from Comicsology, the app that is on the iTunes here, and the way that the comic comes out, it was first we had the mainline comics and then we got the Friends Forever comics. And during this time, this was the My Little Pony Civil War series where <laughs> Captain America and Iron Man were fighting. Okay. And then when the comic came out on Comicsology, the cover here is Twilight and the townspeople are arguing or the townspeople are arguing and Twilight is in the middle. In my brain, I thought this was a continuation to that series coming to an end here. I thought that 
wow, this was brave of them to do this. Like, this is insane. Wow. Like, oh god. L- let's see how it works. Let's see how it works. Click on the app. Comic page open. Nope. <laughs> it's the Applejack and Big Mac Micro. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Uh, Applejack like and Big Mac Micro? Sorry, um, Friends of River series. <sighs> I'm not saying that it's bad, but the cover for the book here took me for a loop. And I guess this is a good time to say, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> also, it, it's a good time to say that the Comixology app is, uh, not one more faulty than the, it's more faulty than the developers and programmers will be willing to admit. Yeah. But hey, uh, I get the comic this way, so it's awesome. But anyway, um, on my thoughts about the comic, I like how they presented the situation for Twilight here. Overwork, so stressed, not having fun. Spike told Twilight to go back to the basics. And going back to the basics is spy on people. <laughs> and well, who else to spy than Big Mac? And I do like the dynamic of Big Mac here where he has more than meets the eye. And I, I think i just going to leave it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, comic could be a good complement to the uh, Big Macintosh looking for a box of nails comic arc that we had all the way back in like 20, 2013. Uh, because I think it follows up on on the whole, everything that happens with Big Macintosh happens on the inside, literally. Is that he doesn't say anything or he doesn't say more than it's, not, than it's necessary because on the inside, he's a lot more complex and he's a lot more organized than he is uh, showing at first glance. Like, we we will see that later when we are talking about the comic. But this this was this was an interesting read because uh, the the character of Toilet Sparkle can be both really interesting and very boring depending on who's writing her. And I think that Ted Anderson did a very good job with this one. It's like. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Sue me, kill me, send me hate mail, do whatever you want. But I think that Ted Anderson is one of the best writers for the comics, with the one exception of the uh, Sirens, Finship is Magic, which was god awful. But every other comic that he has written, it's really good, and this one is no exception. It it's very fun, very enjoyable, and I think it it's very likable. And like Silver said, doesn't lose the focus of you know having the two characters. Twilight and Big Macintosh, they are together in almost every single panel and they work off each other really well. So, yeah, I really enjoy this comic a lot. But before we go deeper into the discussion of it, we should just warn you that we're going to go into spoilers right now. So, uh, are you guys ready? Uh huh. Ready. Ready, steady. Okay. Let's go for it. Let's go balls deep into spoilers. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's go. So, we start with the comic where, uh, uh, Spike is getting into Twilight's study, and he finds her chewing up, chewing up her mane. When we see piles and piles of friendship reports, uh, messages in bottles, envelopes, scrolls, she's she's overworked, overstressed, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, there's my commission queue right there. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels like. It's like there is no solution. You can. And, and she says she cannot stop thinking about all the work that she has spent in. She's thinking about it when she's eating, when she's with her friends, when she's trying to sleep. Yeah, relatable from my point of view, very, very relatable. Mm. I, I believe I feel the same way with my review queue. <laughs> like I can, I can only work so fast on a project, but they're piling up and up and up. It's a madhouse, I tell you, a madhouse. Oh no. Same like my cue for the reviews. <sighs> but uh I do want to note that Chewing Her Mane was established way back in the Twilight Micro. Really? It was one of the first things she ever d- did. Twilight, Spike noticed that she always chews her mane when she's nervous. So that's a nice little bit, not a continuity right there. Wow, that that is a callback from way back. Like, way I didn't back. even knew that. But I- do say that uh, toilet chewing on her mane, that's cute. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I also kind of marvel 
I, this takes on different meaning after Princess Spike. But Twilight is in essence a Dear Abby. Dear Abby? What's that? People used to write in with personal problems and some a person or a team writing under the pseudonym Abby mm. uh, would give them advice on life lessons or strategies to deal with uh, adversity. So here's Twilight. Everyone's writing in for her to solve their friendship problems. And at first I thought, hey, that's a pretty good time for a princess of friendship. Then I saw Princess Spike. It's like, you ponies are idiots. <laughs> Stop bothering Twilight and start solving your own problems. Sometimes it cannot be helped. Rage. <laughs> Anger. But, yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to admit is that princess of friendship, that's a big toll. Like, that's, that's like being counselor, psychiatrist, and like almost lawyer for every single, uh, friendship problem out there. And there, there is more like friendship clashes than, uh, we are, we, we can even imagine. So, just think about uh, that that amount of work. I think that's little compared to what she should be dealing with on a daily basis. No wonder she's getting stressed out. Mm-hmm. She has to figure out a way to relax, trying to get you know some uh, downtime. So she goes out to town to see if we, she can find somebody to uh, help her deal with that amount of work. I'm yeah. sorry. Before we go too far, I do want to make one note about the coloring, specifically about Spike, and I don't. I vaguely think we've talked about this before, but have you noticed that on Spike's eyebrows, mouth, and tongue, it's all green? Oh, okay. They are all green. Yeah. Uh, granted, he's a reptile, he's a dragon, he's, you know, green and scaly and all that stuff, but it's sort of funny, his mouth in the show is always warmer colors, yeah, it's, it's so- pony colors. They are color like the, the, the mouths on the ponies. Yeah, because uh, I have a reference here, and in the show, his inner mouth is a dark shade of uh, purple, and his tongue is pink. And, you know, this could be attributed to what Headed told me. It's what the line artist labeled, because I asked her about the Applejack Micro, and she mentioned that it was labeled wrong or something like that. Probably that. I'm not gonna go beyond that. But, but I just, it, it, it distracts me seeing Spike like this because it sort of makes him look less real, quotation marks, mm-hmm. uh, than other, than Twilight. In the panel where he's pointing at all the quills that she has chewed out, the way that Spike's mouth is drawn with the colors, he looks more like a Dungeons and Dragons monster than a, an actual character. He looks very weird. I know, I think I know what you're, what you're coming from with this one, Silver. Didn't notice it at first, but wow, now, now, now I'm looking at it and now I cannot unsee it. Now it's bothering me too. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Ah, I've ruined it for you. Ruined forever, zero out of ten. Okay, comic reviews done. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I'm gonna put the comic solo you know, uh, grade on like one star. There okay, you go. Bye. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, not really. But no, uh, yeah, you're, you're correct. What a little change can make for an entire character. Now, I also but, have to wonder, as Twilight's walking through town, who is this stallion with the bow and arrow cutie mark that has a question mark over him? Who is he looking at? Is he looking at the at the blue earth, uh, the blue unicorn across the way, or is he looking at Twilight? I don't know. He's uh, no, he's looking th- down the the down the alleyway because he's like kind of looking. Between the two houses, he just found the next couple that he wants to ship. So what? he's going to, yeah, why not? No. He has I... the, <laughs> he has the bow and arrow. He's Cupid. He's going to ship ponies. He's yeah. a matchmaker. No. <laughs> no matchmaker. Turn away. Let's eat that path lies madness. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, no, no, no. I know what he saw. He saw Flash Sentry on the other side of the alleyway. <laughs> he's like, aha, Twilight is here. I'm oh. going to make my dreams come true. Aha. Flashlight. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, while, well, Cupid is doing something. Twilight is going through town looking for ponies who can help her with her problems, which is how to handle a lot of work. Yeah, uh, like thinking h- about working, man. thinking about working the cakes, for... like mayor, uh, mayor. No, definitely not up, Rainbow Dash. And ends up going to, of course, her friend Applejack, Logical. who. Is once again not available because she has to go, uh, deliver some crates to, uh, apple crates to the Canterlot Culinary College. So she's not going to be available. But Big Macintosh is. Yeah, I so... need to bring up something here. 
Um, while pulling the cart, Apple Bloom is also carrying a heavy load of apples. And <laughs> if you guys take a look, see, that is a huge load for Apple Bloom to pull. Uh, well, she pulled that uh, pie cart very well on the uh, uh, on some point to watch over yeah, me. Yeah, but that's not. I don't heavy. think she's gonna have too much problem with that. Yeah, but you know how that, you know the the loss of uh, momentum and all that. Mm-hmm. Once you start moving that and everything, just the the wheels do the rest. Yeah, but the starting of pushing it, like take a look, see, man, that is more than what Applejack is pulling. Ah, uh, she's she's fine. She is a big pony. <laughs> oh, kilo, well, kilo, what kilo. Is it? Is it? The Apple family has freakish strength all uh, around. Okay, uh, I'll go with freakish strength. What? Just watch. But Granny Smith could probably bench press Twilight's castle. <laughs> oh, uh, considering that she is a Highlander, I'm pretty sure she can do that. Uh, next page. Next page. <laughs> ah, now you're, now you're in a rush. Um, so Twilight, because she's very much like Audrey Tattoo. She doesn't uh like direct approach. So she starts, uh, you know, surveilling Big Macintosh, trying to see, like, trying to figure out what he's doing and how he does things. I love her drawings. Like, her field notebook has to be the most adorable field notebook in history. Look at that, so cute. He's a, it's a, it's a cute Big Mac cartoon. I don't see her winning an art competition, but that's so cute. Well, she even admits, side note, invest in some drawing lessons? <laughs> So we're 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 harking a little back a little bit back to feeling Pinky King as Twilight is observing a pony in their natural habitat. Mm-hmm. Good continuity, good callback. Thankfully, nothing's falling on her head. <laughs> if you want Cupid, Twilight's watching Big Mac shake out his hindquarters with binoculars. In fact, she's watching him from behind an awful lot. Me thinks she might be getting a full view. Oh uh, wow! No, no, no. Oh no, yeah. No. I think I found the prince of the moon. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. Focus. Enhance. <laughs> Zoom in. Enhance. So I was uh, wishing she brought some bits for bouncing, if you know what I mean. Oh, God. No. But <laughs> That flank. But what happens next, guys? So Twilight is in the tra- uh, on a tree branch uh, going, I'm a bird. No, not really. And she's like, wow, he's gotten so much done in one day. How does he do it? And all I've done just here sitting on this branch doing absolutely nothing. I could be back there and fixing friendship problems. Hello. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you, you were listening to me, right? Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Big Mac here is one of those characters where he's just hard to have a conversation with. I love how nonchalant he is. Mm-hmm. Like, he just he 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 pops into the branch, and as soon as Twilight goes, I shouldn't be wasting my time spying on Big Macintosh. <coughs> uh, did you hear me say that I was spying on you? Yep. And then she apologizes. Well, we've all good reasons, really, because um, my Twilight's mindset is the best way to research is to watch it in its natural habitat. And, and therefore, she gets the idea of getting inside Big Macintosh's head. Uh, but only after failing at an interview where... This is kind of, this is where Big Macintosh, a personality... Sometimes people accomplish a lot simply because uh, other aspects are toned down. Big Mac, despite his dreams of being a princess one day, <laughs> uh, he's not big on imagination, so he's not prone to distraction. Mm-hmm. He's not very talkative, so he doesn't really engage people or ponies uh, very often outside of work. And it's basically summed up when, when Twilight says, do you have any useful information? And he just says, nope. <laughs> so sometimes that's just the, that's the simple reason why he gets a lot done. Mm. He, because he's kind of shut down aspects of social life and filled it with work. Mm, true. One of those basic essential socialing skills where... Talking to people is kind of a talent, if you would say. But one thing I do like about this page here on page 11 is the faces that Twilight makes. It's, <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's like the first page questioning and then like not getting a good answer. And as it goes on till the last panel, it's all good. Like it's the it's the art of Brenda Hickey. I yeah. mean, she's the one that did the Friends Forever with uh, Twilight Pie. and yeah. Pinkie Pie, and she did the uh, the Kim Sombra mm-hmm. uh, Finship is Magic comic. I mean, 
uh, the the saniness of her uh, artwork. It's one of the most important parts of her, you know, personal style. And this is no exception. This comic is a lot of fun. And the second to last panel, that reminds me of Kill a Kill. Also, another thing I need to bring up is Big Mac's personality here and the right thing for him. Because I've been reading a lot of fanfics where Big Mac is kind of an essential character. And fanfic writers take a lot of liberty writing him. And all in all, there's a consensus of most writers saying that he is very intelligent, yet he's the quiet type. And I guess we'll know in this next page. Well, I do love that Twilight feels the need to include her own sound effect. <laughs> Zoop. But before that, a style comment on this. I know that they want to sh- to to show that Spike is on the foreground but shaded, but the shading that they went for in this one is like he's kind of like codified. You know, it's like when you have interferences on a TV channel that you cannot watch mm-hmm. because you haven't purchased it. So <laughs> that's what it. That's what Spike looks like. It's like, well, hang on a minute. Do I have to pay to unlock Spike's Spike's correct shading on this uh, panel or like? Because if you notice, even the lines on her on his belly confuse with the lines of the shading. It's really weird. I wonder what happened there. But Actually, I... this this is just proof that Twilight's in the Matrix. Spike was a glitch all alone. Uh, I think in terms of styling and art, it doesn't really matter because our attention's not on Spike. It's more on Twilight. It matters to me. It's bothering me. I'm looking at it and I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I, I guess, but yeah, it's not bothering me that much. Oh well. Can't help it. Sorry. Sorry, Heather Breckle. I would have shaded it differently. Personal preference. <sighs> but we see that, yeah, Twilight discovers the uh, getting into <laughs> Magical Mindscape Manifestation spell. I want someone to write all of the different types of spells that they have and put them all together in a book. I will buy that in a, in a whim. And she puts it into, uh, she, she puts it into effect, uh, with Big Macintosh, who doesn't, he, he has the biggest, not sure if want face. <laughs> and though he says, yep, yeah, Twilight has just startled him, bombarded him with this weird question, and really not given him time to think. Mental privacy? What's that? What is that? I'm gonna actually, get in your head. <laughs> actually, that's kind of a big thing. I mean, I felt this ever since I saw Caden zap ponies into love. <laughs> I think she learned it from her sister. It, mental privacy in Equestria is kind of a suggestion. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, you know what? I, yeah, I, no, I'm not going to take it for this one. Well, she did learn from the best, which is Luna. <laughs> yes, well, Luna will peek in on your dreams. Goodness knows what, what terrors that might involve. Twilight's pr- the reform spell? Do I even have to dredge up that little nightmare again? <laughs> Ponies are totally uh, fine with intruding into someone's thoughts and feelings. And to be honest, as a very private person myself, I find this concept horrifying. <laughs> the Starlight Glimmer, you are so wrong for brainwashing these ponies and changing their cutie marks. Now let me go to my library and find for a reforming spell so you don't do that ever again. I am better than you because I'm the protagonist of this show. I'm the hero. I'm the good guy here. The princess is always right. Uh, you know, Silver, you and I, we need to have a three days long conversation about how reforming spells are the, 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 the worst idea they could have for this. Show. They are no better than Discord's brainwashing magic or what Starlit Glimmer was doing. Well, anyway, yeah. so let us finally go into Big Mac's head hosted by Little Fairy. Hey, listen! Macintosh. Hey, listen! Hey, hey, listen! Hey, hey! Uh, you mean... Listen! <laughs> you mean exposition at a Mac? Uh, talkative Big Mac. Mm. <laughs> and it's good to see that his talkative side is the smallest one. Oh, yeah. Because he's not all that talkative. I like that! That's so clever! But at the same time, uh, even the, even the artist drew at a comic convention, Big Mac just being Navi. <laughs> oh well, but hey, Twilight, listen. Hey, Twilight, listen. Hey, this is interesting. Like having the smallest aspect of Big Mac's personality being that small as a quote-unquote fairy is really interesting. And being, I don't know, direct or indirect reference to Navi does say a lot. 
Oh, it's pretty it's pretty direct these days. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Ted Anderson but, probably did it best in his in, on his Twitter page. Oh, what did he, what did he say in that? Oh, here I'll just we'll have to post the link for all the good folks listening. But feast your eyes on that. Well, actually, Brent Hickey drew this. Thing. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, is it taking forever to load? Oh, yes, this was awesome. Yes. All right, I've distracted, but I think <laughs> no, it it's okay. it's worthy distraction, man. Worthy distraction. This is brilliant. Indeed. But Big Macintosh's mind, in indeed his world, is Sweet Apple Acres. In some ways, he's conditioned to be this active because it's been that way since he was born. Mm-hmm. Twilight just assumed princesshood, so this is all foreign territory to her. Difference that's not really stated in the comics, but it's something to consider. I always worry when people start comparing themselves to others without realizing, hey, we've led very different lives. Mm. And with that aspect here, like Big Mac here, like he, I'm going to say that he will never leave the farm. He's grown up on it, he's worked on it, and he's going to live on the farm till the day he moves on. So... His life or the is... day he dies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I, I was going for, uh, wow. <laughs> anyway, like, his life is all about the apple farm. So, in his mindset, with how this is, hey, it works. He's a man dedicated to his job. Oh, man, funny, horse. Uh, stallion. <laughs> dedicated he's... to his family. Yeah, he's dedicated to his family, his craft. So, he is passionate about it, but... That doesn't uh, repress any other side. Like, if you look at it, there is no... Uh, so, like, you could make a parallelism with Inside Out, mm. kind of, where you can see all the different sides that Big Macintosh has. It's like you have the talkative side, which is kind of like uh, uh, energetic and talkative, but it's very very tiny. Then you have the helpful side, who's always at the at the ready, ready to give a hand. Mm-hmm. Then the smart side, and both have the same, the same, uh, you know, kind of level of importance. Then his curious side, his depressed side, his angry side, like overreacted, rude, curious. It's, it, it is really cool to see these many different interpretations of Big Macintosh. I think oh. overprotective Big Macintosh is my favorite. Where is it? Uh, let's see here. What's the... <laughs> You looking at my sister, Mister? <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't find the page number. No, right I found now. it. I found it. It's on page number eighteen on panel three. Yeah. So, just the idea of him being oh, somehow it seems like the only role brothers can have in this show is if they're overprotective of their sisters. <laughs> so true. I like that. I am like that with my own sister. So, and then finally, we have what might be the greatest visual in the entire comic. This is one of those scenarios where, out of context, this is weird. Let's pull Twilight's horn out of her head and just get inside there. And the face she's making there. <laughs> that's great, though. That's that's. Uh, we just uh, finished review. We were reviewing the other day the uh, Princess Luna uh, episode mm-hmm. where they go inside so many different themes. <laughs> Like this one is uh, very much like that. It's like they are inside Big Macintosh's head. So now we go from Big Mac's head into Twilight's head while still in Big Mac's head. How it's does... like we go from one head to one head. It's, it, it is really cool. And what a contrast. Because do you remember how in that episode we see a very similar visual where Twilight had a library and all that? But that one was organized. This one is a complete and absolute mess. Well, I need to say something here first uh, before we move on to the panel. The line that Twilight says, well, hey, no going inside my head unless you're invited. Which she kind of coerced her way into Big Mac. <laughs> Mac touches Noggin. So, well, karma. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, Biden you in the flank, didn't he, Twilight? Wow. But I do like oh. the scenario here. Like, all the Big Macs are inside Twilight's head trying to, well, they're, they're curious. Like, the helpful one, the talkative one, the curious one, they're all trying to, well, do what they're doing. Help being curious and talk a lot. I think we should do that. And yeah, it's, uh, they basically spell it the blindly obvious, but I guess sometimes you just need people to help state that for Twilight has a revelation. I need to stop obsessing. Good luck with that. That is so easy to say. I know from experience it's hard to put into practice. Oh, it is. It is. Stop worrying. Stop being too panicky. Stop being too, you know, 
it's it's it is not as easy as switching off the the uh, pull of the switch and that's it. Like pull of the plug, you're gonna do that. It's still thumping at you. True. In fact, if you say, in fact, if you say to yourself, "Stop stressing." Wait, am I stressing? I don't need to be stressed. Oh God, how do I stop stressing? I feel so stressed about stressing. Yeah, and you get even worse. That's 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 usual. It's counterproductive. So yeah, gotta throw in a a diversion somehow. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, that we we do learn that Twilight's head is actually a lot more disorganized than, uh, than even Big Mac's, and that's because she has such a workload that she has been unable to put uh, her uh, thoughts into into place. So with that, she finally gets kicked out of Big Mac's head, which just brings up so many different questions. It's like, okay, so. Twilight was inside his head all this time, and she just got literally kicked out. <laughs> or like, how do you? I don't know how it works. I just want to know the uh, the the full animation of that sploop panel. <laughs> oh, if if wow. someone were to animate that, I'm pretty sure half the Bronies would go into a fear induced slumber. Oh wow, no! But that 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 scene is just interesting. <laughs> And Twilight sums it up. Well, that was extremely bizarre. <laughs> yes, indeed. I agree. It was really bizarre. But it was very insightful. And so Twilight is about to leave. She's about to go back. But then she figures out, hey, hang on a minute. I'm not going to fall into the same, uh, uh, you know, bad habits that I had before. Big Mac, do you have any chores I can help you with? Any uh, thing that I could take that I could work on while I take my mind off of my problems mm-hmm. and that is so relatable that is so true like okay can I speak for a moment from a completely personal point of view go ahead I have literal fights with my mom about doing some of the chores in the house I do like I want to do the dishes no I want to clean the table no I want to do this do that and the reason why is because when I am doing any of the chores at the house, it's so relaxing and it's so good. And it's like, yeah, this is the perfect moment for me to take my mind off of the, all of the things that I have to work on. And I can just, you know, do this. And, and this is very much like that. I, I am so glad to see a comic that, or a story that, uh, takes, a, a manual labor as a sort, a sort of therapy. That is really cool, and I am very happy that they are doing it like this. So, yeah, this moment is perhaps my favorite part of the entire comic. It's like the, the moment where I realizes, hey, maybe if I do some chores, that will help take my mind off of things. And lo and behold, it works. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what, what do you think? What do you guys think about the, this scene? I think it makes sense. Sometimes losing yourself in, uh, in a process, I mean, even going for a drive, I find very therapeutic. Mine's focused on the road, or if it's a very easy drive, then I can sort of get to just sort of the zen of driving. Uh, it helps clear the brain and leave behind, and the farther you go, you can actually leave your problems in the dust. At least for a little bit. That's for me, I have this page here, like, having yourself distracted does work. Like, it gets your mind off some of the things that's troubling you, and it does help, but in the long run, would I say that it will work a hundred percent? Probably not for some people, I guess. But hey, if it's working for you, I guess it works then. Hmm. Well, of course, it's a, like I said, personal perspective. Hmm. Totally subjective. I'm not being objective. Come on, nobody can. We are not Balkans here. But yeah, I mean that that is that is, in my opinion, the the highlight of the comic. And so Twilight comes back home. Feeling much better after doing some work and all that. And because she took her mind off of problems, she figures out, hey, hang on a minute, I know how to solve that friendship problem. Get me something to eat, get me, uh, cool. get me this in that inspire. Let's go back to work. And that's how the comic ends. Yay. Back to work. <laughs> back to work. Back to work. Spike, you're, you're here, you're here to serve me. Get to it. <laughs> Come on, slave. Oh, wow. Yeah. Here we are putting the most negative view on it. It's, it's Spike. It doesn't get <laughs> Spike is reliable like that. <laughs> yeah. But we come to the end. Final thoughts, guys? So, yeah, let's go for final thoughts. 
That's a, well, what a fun comic. I mean, just to see all the different versions of Big Macintosh, to see all these great expressions on Twilight, a very good message about finding a way to sort of lose yourself in, in a moment of relaxation, or maybe better to say dis- fun distraction, or just helping others. Something to get you out of the rut is a lesson I think even adults can still learn. I will say that sometimes they make it look a little too easy for Big Macintosh when you realize that a lot of his life and personality has trained him for this lifestyle, and that's why he makes it look easy. I'm sure he's had to deal with this process himself at some point in his life. So, you know, different lives, different process. No one person is better than the other. There's Big Macintosh is not a great conversationalist. But all in all, this was a fun pairing, a great way to get Big Macintosh more expressive, and a, a fun way to have Twilight learn a little bit more. And as for me, uh, what can I say? The comic is, well, art is good. Coloring is a bit derpy with Spike, but all in all, looks awesome. The story itself is fascinating, and I do like what Ted does with Big Mac. Writing for someone who doesn't talk that much is really hard, and creating a personality out of nothing is even harder. And, well, the thing that he did here was not canon-breaking. I would just say that it's more canon fodder. So, all in all, awesome comic. (laughs) <laughs> Canon follow. <laughs> I like how you worded that one. That was kind of like you know, that was good. Yeah. Uh, this, it's like that. Mm, oh god, you know we're getting close. To, this is the seventeenth Friends Forever comic, uh, yeah. and we have, we have what what two more left yeah, to review. Left. We have the the, the Rainbow Dash yeah. and Fluttershy and the rarity with the cakes. Mm-hmm. We are getting closer to the twenty comics on on the Friends Forever series. True. It's getting so difficult to make a top five anymore. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, and that's kind of weird when you think about it, because to, for a comic series to have that many good comics, or at least to have that many interesting, worthy of being in the top five comics, that's kind of a rare rarity. No pun intended. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would put this one on my top ten uh, favorite comics. I'm not sure in what position yet, but this was great. Um. I was happy to see that the, the 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 strength of this comic book and the strength of this uh this franchise and the way that they build it together is that uh f- friendship is always there regardless of gender. If this had been any other IP, they would have put Twilight and Big Macintosh together as a couple. Mm. In in an extreme case maybe. I am happy to see that they didn't do it in this one. They are friends. They're very good friends. And after this one, this, they are even even closer. So that's good. I like that. I like that it doesn't insult the audience's intelligence. It doesn't patronize the the reader. It's not dumbed down for children, and it's not so uh, so cerebral that it can get lost into them as well. I think this comic hits all the right spots. And it hits all the right tones, tunes at the same time. It's, it's brilliant. I think it's great. Ted Anderson, you've done it again. Uh, please, don't stop writing like this and stop doing things with the silence of Rainbow Rocks. So, James, what next week's review going to be, man? Well, we are out of pony episodes. Mm-hmm. We're almost out of pony comics. Almost. You know what? We're going to surprise everybody with next week's review. Ah. We might not even be reviewing something pony related. Mm, I see. I'm just saying. So you would say that dominoes falling, riots in the street, maybe this time there's no retreat, there's no surrender? Mm-hmm. Maybe. You got no idea what I'm saying, are you? I am totally, I totally know what you're keep quoting right now. <laughs> and those, those who have watched it, oh, uh, yes. We are actually going to tackle that one. Yep. But that will be a story for another time. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this, this podcast. You guys are awesome and without you we wouldn't be able to do any of what, anything of what we do nowadays. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for following us. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. It's time to do something. 
And I'm Silver Quill. Thank you for listening, listening. Hey, hey, listening, listening. Ah! Oh, I'm down. <laughs> oh, yay. Uh, thank you, Silver Quill, for finishing with Silver Quill. <laughs> anyway, oh, thank you guys so much. And we'll see you on the next episode review. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs> Oh, wow, that did not turn out well. That the the call quality is totally crap on that. Yep. Hey. It sounded like something that Pennywise the clown from It would have sounded. Like. <laughs>